everybody, and welcome back to this Friday edition of Focal Point on AFR Talk. Brian Fisher is my name. Great to have you in the conversation. You heard Buster Wilson talking on that break about the Pope. This is a Pope who's reached out to evangelicals in the country of Argentina and shares an allegiance to many of the same values that we hold to in the evangelical community. So this is very, very good news in terms of our desire to be at work to reclaim this culture. I went over some of the quotes that have come from his lips in the last couple of years just yesterday. He said that same-sex marriage, for instance, is a move of the father of lies. It is demonic and satanic uh, in origin. He said that gay adoption, and and it's it's a rejection of God's law, is what same-sex marriage is, He's also said that gay adoption is a form of discrimination against children because it denies them what they have a right to, which is a right to be raised by a mother and a father. And he has also said with regard to the sanctity of life issue that abortion is a death sentence for a child. It's like capital punishment for a child. Now, the Roman Catholic Church, we differ with the Roman Catholic Church on the use of capital punishment. The the, the Catholic Church is against the use of capital punishment I believe the scriptures support it, and so we have a difference there. But the Pope's point is, look, if we're going to be against putting somebody to death at the end of life, which we are, we ought to be against putting somebody to death at the beginning of their life in abortion. So this is very, very good news. He seems to be very unapologetic about these things. He is outspoken about it. He doesn't pull any punches. He got crosswise with the president of Argentina back around 2000, basically got exiled got sent out into the into the weeds somewhere, some small little village where he was teaching school, and it was the current, uh, the, the Pope that he replaced that came and found him and made him the Archbishop of, I think, Buenos Aires or Rio de Janeiro One brought him back to prominence in a position where he could become the next Pope. Now, the fact that the Pope, this is clip number one, Rob, the fact that the Pope has been unapologetic about these conservative values has just kind of wigged out the left. Uh, You'll hear them use the term reformer. Is this guy going to be a reformer? Which, By which they mean, is this guy going to come in and fundamentally dismantle the values of the Roman Catholic Church? That's what they mean by reform. By reform, they mean destroying the moral values that the Roman Catholic Church has always stood for, whether it's marriage or sanctity of life. That's what they're talking about. To them, that's a good thing. Now, here's Matt Lauer, and he's actually he's on the NBC Today show, and he's, I guess he could be the next Jeopardy guy to replace Alex Trebek. They're having problems with that Today show, by the way, with Matt Lauer. They got rid of Ann Curry, and numbers really haven't ticked up, and so the end could be near for Matt Lauer. But here he is ruminating and fretting and wringing his hands over the fact that the Pope is not more progressive. Let's listen. I hope you you understand what I'm about to say in the tone it's intended. I think when he stepped out onto the the loggia yesterday, um, there was some stunned silence for a second. I think some had expected a younger man. He's 76. Some had expected someone who at least visually seemed to epitomize a more modern church. When you looked at that image of the new pope standing with some members of the church hierarchy, visually, Cardinal Dolan, it didn't exactly scream a modern church. Do you understand? <laughs> so, Matt Lauer, you believe these guys, Matt Lauer wants the appearance of the pope to scream modern church. Well, I'll tell you something. You know, we got a soundbite from Marco Rubio playing a little bit. Basically saying we don't need a new idea. America's just fine. America's the idea. America works. We're, we don't need to upgrade our ideas. The ones that we've got, the ones that we've had are just fine. And here's my point. The truth is always contemporary. The truth is always modern because the truth never, ever goes out of style. So if you are clinging to the truth, I mean, other people might not think you're relevant, but you are as relevant as you can possibly be because what is true yesterday is true today, and it will be true tomorrow. So if you plant your feet on the truth, it's never going to go out of date, never going to go out of uh, style. 
Number to call if you want to join the program, 888-589-8840. A couple of thoughts as we uh, come toward the bottom of the hour here about developments today. Uh, I'm very concerned about Rand Paul's view of marriage, and I want to talk with you about this. Again, I'm not I'm not trying to say don't support Rand Paul, don't believe in him if you happen to like him. I know a lot of people in this listening audience do, and that's fine. I'm not trying to talk you out of that. I'm just expressing my concern about where he's coming from on the issue of marriage. Now, Rand Paul basically wants government to get completely out of the issue of marriage. He wants to go to a direction where any two people could establish a, a legal contract. wouldn't matter who they were. They could be two gays. They could be two whatever. And they would enter into what it would amount to a kind of a quasi-marriage by this legal contract. And then that would be the only thing that would bond them together would not be the symbolism of marriage or the state approval of marriage, but this private legal contract into which they would enter, like you, like a business contract or something of that sort. And he wants to get the government out of the business of marriage altogether. And I have grave, grave concerns about this. He believes it ought to be at the state level, but he believes like his father, he may not be quite as radical as his father, but he believe, believes like his father that it's, the government ought to stay out of it altogether. But here's the problem that I see with, with Rand Paul's approach. It will devalue, and I'd be glad to get your reactions to this, to my assessment of Ron Paul's position. You know, I've said this before. Rand Paul is a man of unbending principle. I admire that about him. I love that about him. What you see is what you get. He's not going to bend. He's not going to waver. You know, it's, it reminds me of John the Baptist. You know, Jesus said, when you went out to see John the Baptist, what did you go out in the wilderness to see? A reed swayed by the wind? I think everybody just would have laughed. Because whatever John the Baptist was, he wasn't a, sw a reed that was moving to and fro, being swayed and moved around by the wind. He was a rock. He was a pillar. He was an oak. And Rand Paul is like that. And because he's a man of unbending principle, this is absolutely terrific when he's right, but it's dangerous when he's wrong. And on this one, I think Rand Paul is wrong, and it's a, it's a major issue because of the importance of marriage as the cornerstone of any healthy society. Now, if we turn this thing into a contract, as Rand Paul wants us to do, you know, people could get married in a church. They could get a, could get a ceremony that was done in a the church. They could have paperwork that was produced by the church and signed by the pastor and all that. But it would have no recognition from the state. That document wouldn't have any legal significance. Now, the problem here is that Rand Paul's approach is going to devalue the institution of marriage. I mean, if it's a contract that Ray and Earl can sign, if it's a contract that Raylene and Earlene can sign, then there's nothing special about marriage. Now, what happens when marriage loses its specialness, people just don't get married. It's not that more people get married. It's that fewer people get married. If you look at Scandinavian countries, marriage is just about to disappear in Scandinavian countries. Once they legalize same-sex marriage, once that threshold was broken, then it, it rapidly increased the number of couples that were just cohabiting. Because when two gay people could get married, then the uniqueness and the distinctiveness of marriage was lost. It was trashed. It was demolished. It was no longer a special, unique institution. So what happened, it's not that everybody rushed out and got married. It's that nobody got married. Now, the problem with this is the impact on kids. Because what this means in Scandinavia, we're seeing this in America now, you get more and more kids that are growing up in these very unstable environments, very fluid. You'd have father or mother figures in and out of their lives. There's nothing stable there. There's nothing lasting there. They aren't getting any kind of role models to imitate in terms of how to build a marriage and a family themselves. And so I think this approach is going to lead, and this is, this is the fatal flaw with libertarianism, uh, by the way, is the fatal flaw of libertarianism is that it degenerates into license. No matter what you try to do, it degenerates into license. If you don't establish some societal and public policy guardrails around human behavior, social behavior, things are going to deteriorate. If, if it, you know, we saw that in the book of Judges, when every man could do what was right in his own eyes, when they got to that place, it was, it was a recipe for chaos. It was a recipe for social disintegration, for fragmentation. 
And that's where I believe we would head if we took the view that Ron, Rand Paul wants to take. Now, I can understand why it's attractive to people. And it's attractive to some people that are, that, that are sympath, in, in sympathy with our values in general because it makes the problem go away. They know this is a, this is, this, they know this is a stressful issue. There's a lot of tension around this issue. A lot of people just are attracted to this idea because it'll make the problems go away. There will no longer be any of these contentious debates over marriage, no more marriage amendments, no more anything. It's just all gone if Rand Paul is able to implement the view of this institution that he's in. I, I think that is going to be bad for America. It's also going to be bad for, for children, as I mentioned. And also, I think Rand Paul is mistaken when he believes that you can keep government out of these quasi-marriages. Because the reality is this is going to get government even more involved in these domestic situations than they are now. Because as marriage is devalued, as the commitment, the public commitment is devalued, it's not emphasized, it's not treated as something that is sacred, then people are going to be less inclined to keep the promises that they've made to other people. Because the promise, the commitment, is just simply not that important under this approach to, to marriage. So this means you're going to have more couples that are going to be divorcing or whatever they're going to call it, dissolving these legal partnerships. You're going to have increasingly contentious battles over child custody. You're going to have huge problems with division of assets, who gets what. And somebody with legal authority is going to have to decide that. I mean, it's one thing to say, well, they get married in the church, we'll let the church decide who gets the kids and who gets the property. That's not going to happen. I mean, the aggrieved party is going to go take that thing right in the court. So I just uh, I just don't see that Rand Paul's approach to marriage is, uh, is a good idea. I think it ought to be a non-starter for conservatives. And if Rand Paul continues to to take this view, if he doesn't adjust this, and I see no reason to think that he will, I think that's going to be very, very problematical for his desire to be our president in 2016. 888-589-8840, number to call. We'll be right back with more after this. Stay with us. Focal Point, AFR Talk.